So hello and welcome to this live Bible study. So um, just a disclaimer, I am not qualified to teach Bible studies. I am just a, a girl who likes digging into the word and just reading it. And today I was reading about, um, well, in Judges chapter 17. And so I figured, you know, might as well just hop on in here and uh, read it with you guys. So hello, um, Aunt Rocky. All right, so um, let me know if you can hear this. <laughs> so I'm just going to have um, Bible.com read it because I, um, it'd be easier for me to kind of stop and, and go from there. So like I said, we'll be in Judges chapter 17. So here we go. Chapter 17. There was a man of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said to his mother, The one thousand one hundred pieces of silver that were taken from you, about which you uttered a curse and also spoke it in my ears, behold, the silver is with me, I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be my son by the Lord. And he restored the one thousand one hundred pieces of silver to his mother. And his mother said, I dedicate the silver to the Lord from my hand for my son, to make a carved image and a metal image. Now, therefore, I will restore it to you. So when he restored the money to his mother, his mother took two hundred pieces of silver and gave it to the silversmith, who made it into a carved image and a metal image. And it was in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had a shrine, and he made an ephod and household gods, and ordained one of his sons who became his priest. In those days... So, um, I'm just stopping right there. Um, all right, so in, in verse 5, it says, And the man Micah had a shrine, and he made the ephod and the household gods, and ordained one of his sons um, to become priest over it. So um, that money that he gave back to his mother, she took those 200 pieces of silver and she had them made into a carved image. And they put it in their house as, you know, household gods. Hello, Veronica. And so I'm just gonna have it keep reading. And then I will stop it in just a minute. Days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Now there was a young man of Bethlehem and Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed from the town of Bethlehem and Judah to sojourn where he could find a place. And as he journeyed, he came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah. And Micah said to him, Where do you come from? And he said to him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem in Judah, and I am going to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said to him, Stay with me, and be to me a father and a priest, and I will give you ten pieces of silver a year, and a suit of clothes and your living. And the Levite went in, and the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man became to him like one of his sons. And Micah ordained the Levite, and the young man became his priest and was in the house of Micah. Then Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will prosper me, because I have a Levite as priest. All right, so, oh, thanks for letting me th know that you could hear it, Veronica. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's crazy because um, in Judges 17, you know, the theme of Judges is they did what was right in their own eyes. And uh, let me get off this so I can actually see the verses. So Micah, not only did he have these other lowercase g gods in his house, but he wanted a Levite. And because we'll, we see in verse... Um, 
uh, verse 13, which is the very last verse of Judges uh, chapter 17. And it says, then Micah said, now I know that the Lord will prosper me because I have a Levite as a priest. So not only did Micah have all these um, carved images, these lowercase g gods, but he wanted a Levite priest because he also wanted Yahweh's blessing. And while I was reading this today, it really made me think, okay, so how many of us has these lowercase g gods? And they could be anything, really. What are we putting above God? Um, are we going to church because we want uh, to get closer and we want the God, um, the one true God, to mold us and shape us into his image, into the image of Christ, you know, being followers of Christ, being that servant, or are we wanting him to just give us these blessings, but while also having these other like lowercase g gods, which could be anything. Um, it could be a car, it can be, you know, whatever you're putting above God. And so um, while I was reading this today, it just really stuck out to me and it really wanted me, or I really wanted to do this video and kind of pose the question, like, why are we doing what we're doing? Are we going to church because we just want um, God to be added to the other, like, gods of our life? Or are we going there because we truly want him to change us, to mold us, and um, to transform us? So one of the things that I have been really um, working or dealing with lately is God has really been convicting me and judging others. And, um, and I need to not do that. I, I do that a lot, actually. Um, and I need help with that. And I, I think that God is really, um, really trying to show me that I need to remove the, um, the plank from my eye before I try to take out the sliver of someone else's eye. And so when, that's a totally different um, thing, and it doesn't really go with, I guess, this, but um, that's just personally what I have been dealing with. And so when I was reading this chapter in Judges, just seeing how, um, like, Micah, he just, he had all these, all these other gods, but he also wanted to throw the true God into the mix so that he would be blessed by him because that was the whole reason of him getting this um, this Levite was because he wanted to be prosperous from the Lord. So he was going to throw, you know, God into the mix with all these other idols. And yeah, it just really, it really hit home for me because I'm like, I'm thinking about how, okay, am I trying to do that? Because we can read scripture and we can look at scripture and see how other people, like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? When really, why are we doing that? Because if we really get to the root of the problem, are we doing this? Because it's easy to see other people doing it, but it's really hard to see when we're doing it. And so, um, yeah, I, I just felt like this would be a good first live um, Bible study because I've been trying to read the Old Testament. And as I'm reading the Old Testament, I'm, I'm seeing how uh, a lot of times people just continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. And I'm wondering how many times am I doing the same thing over and over again? And so I want I really wanted to pose the question to myself, am I going to church for other people or am I going to church for me? Am I going, um, am I trying to add Yahweh, um, Jesus uh, to the mix of all these other gods? Because we know when we read scripture, 
our God is a jealous God. Now he's not jealous of us. He is jealous for us and he doesn't want to share us with any other idols in our life. So are we letting him truly be the Lord of our life or are we trying to throw him in the mix of all these other gods? So that was what I got out of this today. And I hope that this has blessed you in some way. And I hope that, um, this has encouraged you to get into your word and read the word. So um, I think that's about it. So thank you everyone who joined. And if you're watching this on the replay, um, thank you for watching. So God bless.